guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and this is Talk To Me Tuesday for Tuesday, January 29th, 2019. I think I've created my own little tradition for myself now that I am making one of my charity quilts, the baby quilts, on Saturdays. So, Saturdays for sewing for me. I went ahead and whipped out this little quickie strippy. This is a pattern from MaryQuilts.com, and I believe it's actually called Quick Strippy. Quickie Strippy? I'll put a link down below in the description box over on YouTube. It's really quick and simple. You just take one of your focus fabrics, one of your fun, I, I use a little novelty. This is the jungle one that's left over from a previous baby quilt. And then I had some of this fun green and I used black as my accent strip. You just cut them at uh, so many at this whatever width that the pattern says and it just stitches together really quick. This ended up being about 36 by 49. I had it a little shorter, but I decided to go ahead and add one more repeat of this green fabric, whatever it's called, the accent fabric, and then the main print here. It just felt, it felt a little chopped off at the bottom, and I just wanted it to be a little longer. And it's okay, it can still, it's perfectly fine as a baby or toddler. I can actually, if I were to finish this as a quilt, I could have this in maybe or just around me on a chair or in a wheelchair or something because you don't want it too wide to go and bunch up and everything. So while maybe a person in a wheelchair might not want jungle baby prints, it's just the basic idea. I think it would be work perfectly fine for a toddler. If it would work for me sitting in a chair, then it'll be great for a toddler. It gives it that extra length. I think it'd probably end up being called a crib size. But as we've talked before, Baby quilts that keep changing in sizes. What used to be fine 10 years ago, 36 by 36, now they've started to branch out in different sizes. But I figure when I make a quilt, I'll just make it for what I think it would work for, and there's always someone that can use it, right? I was even very good, and I made my binding. Because I used the width of fabric to cut this, because that's what you would normally make this quilt with a fabric, so whatever all your widths are, you just trim it down so that both sides are equal. I ended up trimming off probably about six inches of all the fabrics, but mainly this novelty print of the little jungle babies. So I went ahead and I just cut that down. I ended up getting a couple strips out of that. I haven't folded and pressed it yet, so it doesn't matter if I unroll it and make a mess. I added some green and then another strip of this. I think it's going to look really good on the binding with the contrast of the black coming across like that. Another strip of the green. And then I went ahead and I added in some black. I don't think I'm gonna need it. At this point, I have 12 extra inches left to do my binding. But you know how they say you give yourself 12 inches, but then once you start doing the corners and then you gotta combine it at the end and stuff, I didn't wanna have to make more. So I just went ahead and added the black strip. If I don't need it, I can just cut it off or unpick it. And then I'll be all set and I can either put this in my two and a half strip bin or I can set it aside for another binding. Because that's what I do. I like two and a half inch. I've tried two, two and an eighth, two and a quarter. And for me in the way I sew, it just works out better using two and a half inches. I think I've even heard some people like really, really wide binding and they actually do it at three inches, but they don't they like leave the extra batting out so the quilt will stop at a certain point. Then you have extra batting to fill in that binding where you have it a little bit wider. And that just seems like too much work, too much math, too much thinking ahead. I just like to trim everything up even on the sides and then just stitch my binding down. So I have another quilt done. Well, a quilt top. I have decided I'm just gonna go ahead and keep whipping out quilt tops because I don't have a deadline that I have to get them anywhere at a certain time. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a bunch and when I have them all, I'll, maybe I'll donate them when it gets close to Christmas time, Thanksgiving. So if anyone needs to pass them out to anyone anywhere for Christmas gifts or whatever, they'll have them. Or I might do a bunch in July and then a bunch in December, I'm not sure. But I do know I don't have batting for it. Now, I love the warm and white batting. I've tried a couple other different kinds, and I think I'm just spoiled. It's something that I used from the very beginning when I was doing my quilts, and I just want to stick with it. I enjoy it, I like it, so I'm gonna use it. Now, Joanne's has those big, giant rolls that you gotta, I walk mine down the hall like this, I lay it out on my kitchen floor to cut it. I tend to buy the king size, 
so that it works for whatever size quilt I want. And then I, I wait for it to go on sale, and it's usually anywhere from $200 to $400, depending on what size you get and how good the sale is. And then I pick it up, and I have, I have batting for, you know... I bought two rolls of that batting, and I've been quilting since... I don't know, maybe like, I'd have to look on my blog to find out when I started, but let's just say 2005. So that's 13, 14 years, then I've only had to go and purchase two. And I, actually one year I made 52 small quilts, so it goes pretty far. I do have a few larger quilts that are sitting in the stash, quilt tops that are going to need larger batting. So that's why I wanna buy king size or at least queen size, because I know everything I have is smaller than a queen. It's probably, I guess you could say maybe twin size. Most of them are uh, lap quilts and stuff like that. That's the size I enjoy making, unless I'm making one specifically for a person. So I'm going to save up. I have to pay, you know, those darn property taxes have to get paid after the first of the year all the time. So I'm going to pay my property taxes, and then I'm going to go ahead and save back up. And when I have the money and I see a good sale, I'll buy the roll of batting, and then I can just go ahead and start quilting them. Because these are going to be simple. I want to practice doing stitch in the ditch because my Juki comes with a stitch in the ditch foot and I've never been able to stitch in the ditch successfully. I tend to wobble. So with a quilt like this and the warm and white batting, you only have to quilt it every 10 inches. So this is going to be no problem. I can easily just but maybe an hour if that to go through it's going to take longer for me to get it all pin basted and laid out and everything than it is going to be to actually quilt it so i'm not worried about time crunches there i might just have to take a week where the only thing i'm doing is quilting and then the next week the only thing i'm doing is binding but that's okay because it's all part of the process let me hide my mess down there it is all part of the process and it is what it is right if you're going to be a quilter you need to at least deal with every process. Now, I'm not a fan of pin basting because I'm down on the floor on my knees and until I get a larger table, it's just a pain. And stitching the binding down the first time, I do not like. I always end up, no matter how careful I am, I end up with the, the seams down in the corners. It makes it harder. And sometimes like you run out of binding because you thought you got enough, but you didn't, or you got six miles extra, which is fine. I don't mind that. In the beginning, I used to make enough binding that I could actually bind two quilts with what I cut for one uh, binding for a quilt. It was crazy. But you always have extra for the next one. And since I do scrappy most of the time, it doesn't really matter. Right? I don't mind folding the binding over and machine or hand stitching. Now hand stitching does take forever, but I don't mind doing it these are going to all get machine stitched down it's just that point of trying to get it on there and getting it nice now that i have a walking foot it's going to be much easier i think my favorite part is probably quilting it. i do love piecing a quilt i do love i'm not a big fan of following a pattern but i do love the process of grabbing different fabrics and making different blocks and just getting them to work i don't always plan ahead of time i'm like i like this block and this one i you kind of know the math okay this is a 12 and a half inch one so if you make a couple six and a half inch it balances out and stuff like that you know six is three and four is eight and two and two is four and all those good math things right so i do love adding little extra strips and kind of you know not necessarily crazy quilting but just kind of crazy piecing to get it all to fit i love that i i really enjoy the quilting it's just everything after that kind of stalls out at for me i think i tend to stop at the flimsy at a, a quilt flimsy like this because i know once i quilt it i'm going to bind it and it's going to be done I stop here because then I won't have to baste it and I won't have to add the binding. So I'm working on that. And you know, we're humans, we're all a work in progress, right? So which part do you uh, love the best and you're really not a fan of in the quilting process? I think the part that I'm the worst at is choosing colors. There's a reason I'm a scrappy quilter because when you're a scrappy quilter, you don't, it doesn't matter what matches and what doesn't matches because when you use everything, it's going to match. You just use a common background, white or black, gray, red, red, whatever, and that kind of makes everything work together. So if I'm going to actually plan a quilt and I have to choose colors, 
I take my daughter to the store with me because she's got a really good, what is it, color theory they call it? She's pretty good at picking out colors and matching things together. Hey. It's a good thing there's tools online that help me do things like that, right? That's it for me this week. I already know which quilt top I'm going to make next week, so you'll just have to wait until next week to see it. I'm going to try to stick with my sewing on Saturday routine here because it's been kind of a nice way to, to have a Saturday. I hope everyone gets a little bit of time to work in their craft room and get a little quilting done this week, and I'll see you next week. Bye!